All right, hey, we are back for our segment called On the Line. And today we have on the line Woody Sherwood, aka Legend. Chris, legend. National Wood Sandwood. Sand national champion with Furious and with Jam, is that correct? Yep, that's correct. If you're asking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to we, you. We need to hire out yeah, some of these yeah. details. Okay, so this, we are talking to you, Woody. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and uh, also, uh, what are we coming seventh or eighth place with the Houston Hounds? Oh, Hounds player and double wide player at Kangaroo Perth. Court. Yeah, I mean Perth. He came to Perth. He got the kill. He got the whole kit: the Dude, white, the red, Woody and the is blue. A legendary Hounds player because <laughs> when we were in Scotland, he went and bought like all these handles of Irish whiskey. And then somehow when we got out of the car, one of them broke and somehow he like refiltered the broken glass of whiskey through a bandana so that we could still drink it. Wow. That's amazing. Does that make him a so one or a, a two or a three? Telling the story. So first of all, we're in Scotland and we bought some scotch, not Irish whiskey. Oh, that makes sense. That's I, I, whiskey lovers out there. I was wondering about that. Yeah. We just lost three subscribers. That's right. <laughs> uh, and it was it was one bottle that the whole team chipped in on. So we got like one. It was after the end, and we're like, okay, let's get a really nice bottle of scotch. And it was like, I don't know, it was like a hundred pounds or something. Uh, and of course, that was the one bag that ripped when I was carrying twenty bags of groceries in. Yeah. Uh, so I had to go back to the store, and of course, that was the only bottle they had, so I had to buy something else. It was, <laughs> I think it was more expensive anyway. But we did filter. We did We did save like one glass worth of scotch. Hey, love it. And it was yeah. tasty. Yeah. Not surprising it broke the bag if it was 100 pounds. <laughs> hey. hey. There you go. Hey, so yeah, cur these currency guys? joke. <laughs> uh, we were talking to Sean about no two O. Oh, I'm I'm just curious, like, because I don't know the background. Like, how did you and and Sean? How were y'all hanging out enough for Sean to invite you to a beach tournament in in Rimini back in 2000? Yeah, so that's a great question. I think it was uh, I first met Sean in something like uh, 98, maybe. Uh, he was living in California, and he was still playing with the Hounds. And so, he, you know, all the teams here were practicing and Sean, they, Sean tried to go to their practice. They wouldn't let him because he's a spy. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart of them. But uh, uh, so he had to work out by himself. And so I was working out with him. And uh, I think the Hounds did pretty well that year. And they got invited to Worlds in Scotland. And so I call up my buddy. So, so Sean lived in the Bay for like six months or a year or something. And then he moved back to, to Houston. But I, I sent him a sent him a note. I said, hey, you know, I know Scotland's a long way away. You might not be able to bring your whole team. And if you need an extra dude, I'm available. And uh, I guess he asked everyone else because on the last day of submitting your roster, I got a call like, hey, you still interested? <laughs> 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 so, so, yeah, so I came and played for the Hounds in Scotland. And at Scotland, they, they, we played the Italian team, and they invited us to Paganello. And Damien had been living in. England for a year, so he'd already gone to Paganello, and I think Sean's brother had been to Paganello. Anyway, Sean said, hey, dudes, I'm, I'm making this happen. Like, I'm going to Paganello. Who wants to go? And so I guess not enough people signed up, so I got I got on the team <laughs> by volunteering, and then uh, the rest is history. But yeah. uh, well, it was such you, a good time. We just couldn't stop going back. Since you corrected the Irish whiskey story, I'm gonna I'm gonna correct your okay. story and tell tell Please my do. tell my version <laughs> of it. I, w I was uh yeah I got assigned to a client in California, and that was the year that I uh, had my knee surgery. So I wasn't I wasn't really playing ultimate. I was just I was just hanging out. Oh, okay. But then on the back side of it, I was I was starting to train once I got through some rehab and I was ready to to get back into it. So. I, I tried out three different teams out in the Bay Area, and one of them was uh, Frank Huguenard's team. Oh. Uh, yeah, disc hoops. <laughs> you, you dribbling? I was you dribbling, dribbling out there? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then this, this other team that I don't, I don't really remember much about, but uh, Woody's team was one of them, and uh, Woody's team was, like, super welcoming and really easy to, 
to get along with and I, and they were inviting me out for drinks afterwards so became quick friends there yeah and so just like i was kind of blown away by how welcoming and friendly they were so then on the back side i was thinking okay i got to i got to find a way to you know like do something nice for for woody someday because he was captaining the team and had kind of built this cool culture of of being real friendly and welcoming so um, I ended up having a good hound season, but a lot of it was because I got a chance to train with Woody. And when I, I was like, hey, I play in this Texas team. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's no problem. Just, you know, come out and play with us. We'd love to have you. So it was super, super cool. And uh, and yeah, so then when we had the chance to invite to Scotland, that was an, that was an easy yes. Maybe it happened on the last day. I don't remember that part. But then <coughs> but then no to no to was. Um, you know, we wanted it to be, uh, it's kind of started as a Houston hounds alumni team. So like my, my first scan was like, well, who were the, uh, who are the hounds that wanted to go? And, uh, and, and Woody was one of the ones that I knew had the means to travel internationally and the, uh, the right kind of mindset. So that was an easy connection. That's awesome. And That's, a passport. And a passport. That Crucial. worked. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, Woody, you did all the years of Notsuo and then continued playing with the Los teams, right? Were you the organizer of all the Los, like the Los Ox, Los Rabbit? No, no. I, you know, I don't know if you've ever organized anything, but organizing ultimate players is kind of a whole separate skill set in, in the organizational world. Uh, so, Sean did it for years. And then, you know, one of the final years, Greg uh, Husak came Hollywood and I think it actually the last year of Notsuo was his first year and he's like this is too awesome to not come back yeah and so he kind of took over organizing but you know Sean had built this framework so it was pretty easy to just kind of plug in a new a new guy and you know I just helped with recruiting yeah and yeah I was doing the I did the shirts for you for a couple of years I remember doing that oh yeah um what was it like for you playing Notsuo, like those years going to Paga? How much were you looking forward to that and enjoying that experience? I mean, I've told Sean this before, but really going to that tournament changed my life. It was, it was uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first of which being, it was just cool to like experience ultimate in a different place. But, you know, uh, the people there think differently and act differently and talk differently, at, you know, and it, it was just, as kind of a sheltered American, it was, it really was kind of an eye opening experience to interact with all these people from different places and different cultures. And, and then of course the tournament was super well run and we did well and we had a good time. They have parties every night. So it was like, it was everything that you wanted out of life, uh, rolled into a four day weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, we really had so much fun there that after we left, we, I think we all got a little depressed. No, the post pack of like, blues. Yeah. We had to come up with a phrase, a name for it because it was, it really was a letdown to go back to your real life. So, um, you know, once I experienced that, it was like, and then I think, you know, every year Sean would say, Hey, who's coming this year? Who's coming this year? And after about two years, I said, Hey, Sean, uh, I'm in forever until you tell me to stop coming. Like, <laughs> you don't even have to ask me. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be there. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even know that No Suo ended. I was just still going. <laughs> <laughs> just gave you a different jersey to put on. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, half the guys were the same dude, too. You know, it's the same team. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think it was really big for me because you know I met some people that first year. I hadn't even really started playing club, but then it changed my perspective going to to national tournaments. You know, not not just nationals, but going to competitive tournaments and then seeing guys like you, like seeing you on another team or being able to go over and talk to Damien and then talk to Mike and just meet some other people that way. Like it was a huge networking thing. And just to, to kind of expand the ultimate world to being more than just my team that I was competing with. And then I think having other people, you know, on your team, like seeing you do that and interacting with everyone else, it just like, it just made the ultimate community that much bigger. And then I think Sean, you described Woody great, like just welcoming. If you don't know Woody, you're missing out. Like uh, honestly, like it, it was awesome. That was, and you know that's ninety percent of the time that we've hung out has been on the beach in in Rimini, and it's just been some of the some of the best times, some of the best memory making that I had during my my ultimate career. 
Yeah, I think I, I mean I think Woody and and Jason Vargas as well, JB. Um, you, you know, it's those two guys really that set the kind of the culture and the of the Notsuo team and just you know made it made it as fun as it was. Um, you know, my I was pouring myself into the organization and the design and the almost kind of the branding, the jerseys, all, all that stuff. And, um, and, and was asking those guys, I'm like, Hey, you know, do your thing. And they did. And, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for that because it, uh, I mean, y'all kind of made it into something that was, was even bigger and better than, than I could have imagined. And I mean, it's just like, uh, like you said, just being in Europe, it was, it was just so much fun to have the, all the sort of cultural, um, exposure and uh just met so many different people and a lot of that was just uh you know was through you and through Vargas and all that it's so much fun do you remember how to say coke in italian woody go <laughs> act how, how many um how many car bombs life to date have you purchased in italy rough numbers uh, I'm not good at math. I can't add that much. <laughs> above, I ran out of fingers years ago. Above or or below a thousand? Uh, I'd say a thousand would be a good estimate. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's why we're drinking Guinness yeah. today. Uh, I mean, I know KG and I bonded. That's pretty over. full for a car bomb, Karen. Well, we're, we're not, not drinking car bombs. bombs. We all have kids. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're drinking Guinness. Because okay. of our love with car yeah. bombs. I mean, I know that's when I fell in love with Guinness is just going out to Rimini and being at the barge yeah, and just partying all night with really cool people. We kept the barge afloat. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Right. Hey, I, season I don't one. think you're kidding. I think the barge went out of business. <laughs> oh. After we stopped going. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, <laughs> Easter weekend for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> we always pull through. This is what pays our <laughs> annual salaries. It was like the Black Friday of, uh, of Italy. <laughs> Easter weekend. Uh, so, Woody, I heard through some research that you, through all this uh, overlap with Sean, you only battled him once in Open, in USA Ultimate, UPA Ultimate. Sounds about right. And what what team were you on when that would have happened? And was Sean on double? Because KG asked me about that, and I was trying to trying to figure it out. It might have been a Santa Cruz tournament, Labor Day, when I was playing with Jam. I think one year you ran the Oaks. We might have played against the Oaks out there. Oh yeah, yeah, in Chicago. But I didn't think we played you guys. I think we just hung out. Right. Because you guys were in a, like. We were quickly in a different division than you guys. Right. You know, there's like 80 teams there. Yeah. Oh. We were like a Bay Area regional team, and you guys are like a national contender. Right. Um, well, do you remember like game planning for Sean for that one single matchup? Knock his hat well, off. Well, I remember, I, I'll tell you a funny <laughs> playing against Sean story. You know, in Kaimana one year, another fun tournament. Sean in, was playing in Hawaii. With, in Hawaii. Sean was playing with a different team and uh, they play music during the games. And all of a sudden they started playing Stevie Ray Vaughan. And then Sean got all fired up. He's like, Oh, you shouldn't have done that. You should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and then proceeded to go crazy and score a bunch of goals. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Aloha. So, so my game plan is make sure there's no Stevie Ray around. And, uh, disconnect the speakers if necessary. <laughs> that's hilarious that's a great one yeah no it's funny i remember the first time i went to sean's house uh it was for a camp, hounds mini camp and uh i don't know if we had talked about music a lot before that but i walked into his house he's got posters music posters everywhere i'm like oh shit this dude's like it's not just frisbee that we have in common like you know we, we love music and we love going to shows and and uh uh, he actually got me to start framing some of my posters. <laughs> nice. You know, I was like, oh, that's cool. I have a stack of posters under my bed. You know? I was like, fuck, I got to put some of these on the wall. Well, dude, you'll be happy to know that the mother hips are in Texas. I saw them in Dallas last night and seeing them in Austin tonight. Yeah, one of Sean's favorite bands that disbanded 20 years ago. It's now on their 
second reunion tour, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe third. Yeah, Kaimana. Kaimana is pretty interesting because Kaimana w- was a lot like um, Notsuo. It, 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 in, a, in a lot of ways, Notsuo kind of followed this model that Stu Downs had set. Um, the Southern Discomfort team was kind of this uh, Atlanta and Texas combo, yeah. and it was super fun because um, it, you know they were regional rivals, and then getting a chance to go play with those guys at a fun tournament ended up making regionals a lot more interesting and, yeah. and fun, and uh, really helped get to know them uh, interpersonally and stuff, and um, and so then, you know, Notes O really was designed um, a lot after that. Hall of Famer, Stu Downs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, you know, so it was, it, it made it a lot of fun when we played Jam and when we played Furious and when we played the Condors because we knew all these guys. We had yucked it up with them, in, you know, on the beach in, in Italy. So, yeah, it, it made it super fun. And I think that translated beyond just the Notes O guys, but it, it kind of translated across both teams. Yeah, that's really cool. And it really strengthens the ultimate community. I think you mentioned this earlier, you know, like it's one thing when you're just battling with your team and, you know, it's us against them, you know, but all of a sudden it's like, oh no, it's a bigger thing. It's like, you know, we're all just trying to be good at Frisbee and trying to run around and chase this and have a good time, you know? So it makes it, it makes it easier to do that. I think. Yeah. It makes the, the post playing, you know, seeing people after competing hard. And I think it, it helps with the, the way the game goes too, when you got, you got buddies on the other side. You're playing hard against them, but it, it you know, it could help resolve some issues quicker if things came up, or just makes the. I think it makes the competition more fun going against guys that you know like that, and then to mix it up and play with them. Yeah, I think individual matchups. I never had fun playing Condors or uh, <laughs> Furious, but after, like, on the field with those individual <laughs> people, or and after the game, that yeah. definitely. It was really cool being able. to say i know these guys we can go get a drink at or whatever yeah woody do you have a uh do you have a favorite note so story that's uh safe to tell on the podcast or or do you have a oh we a, have an after hour segment a favorite yeah. game <laughs> we can make an after hour. what's the rating on the podcast <laughs> yeah all right there's it's PG-13? not 13 it's no, not it's rated r it's not live <laughs> we told the story about somebody peeing into a pitcher and, and dumping it. that's rated r yeah go for it yeah Okay. Um, uh, my favorite Paga story. There's so many. Uh, I'll tell you one funny Paga story. Um, and this kind of speaks to Sean's organizational ability. Uh, so Sean is a consummate organizer and he gets shit done and he gets it done right. And so we're going to Paganello and, and I, basically was relying on Sean for all the info. Like he sent us, he emailed us all the stuff and I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm traveling with Sean beforehand. So I don't have to worry about this. And so we were in Rome cruising around, checking out the discos. And, uh, that's also another story, but, um, (laughs) the disco is, is is a, is code for uh, a place where you pay women to sit and talk to you like 10 bucks a minute, (laughs) which we didn't know when we went to the disco. Uh, But anyway, uh, so, so we're in Rome and, uh, there was this chick that lived in Paris that I was trying to go see. And so I had to go to the airport to change my ticket. And so I was like, no problem. I'll meet you guys back at the train station. And to make a long story short, I missed the, I missed the train. And so all of a sudden I'm in Rome and I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm staying. I don't speak any Italian. You know, KG, the Italian major is not there. So like I'm, I'm basically uh, on my own all of a sudden. So I, I, I somehow got to Rimini. I somehow figured out where the beach is, went down to the beach, found Jumpy, who's the organizer of Paganello, and he told me where the hotel was and actually walked me there. Uh, <laughs> and through a coincidence of like taking the wrong trains, which turned out to be a shortcut, I got there like right after those guys, uh, even though I left Rome like an hour after. <laughs> so they're like, what the hell are you guys? What are you doing here? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> This was back before you could check your email everywhere. Right, you couldn't so text and keep up. To get around, but... That's amazing. Uh, yeah. That's funny. That was a good story. Yeah. Man... Good uh, family-friendly story. That was family-friendly. I mean, you, you, we could go more in-depth on those discos in the after-hour segment if we can uh, 
figure out how to call you back later. <laughs> but I think well, I'll uh, tell you another good story. We so we invented this. So one of the things about the the Paganella team and we you know playing with Mike and Damian who are like just like to make games out of everything. We somehow came up with this game called uh, Dopio Cantamit. Dopio Cantamit, <laughs> <laughs> which you take a cheeseburger from McDonald's and you wrap it in duct tape so it becomes like a hockey puck and then you throw it 20 feet through the air and you try to land it in an ashtray hole that's about yo, uh, yo big and uh we're playing this in the hotel in the hallway at four in the morning probably making a shit ton of noise and waking up everybody on our floor so every team that stayed at the same hotel as us hated us the a barth uh, at the A bar, yes. And uh, anyway, it was a great game. But uh, after a couple of days of this, uh, some mafia looking dude took Sean aside and took him in the back room and had a little sit down with him and said, Hey, you know, uh, it's got to stop or, or it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Is that true? Uh, yeah, there's a short version of that story that's true. Yeah. <laughs> But this was this happened often at Paganello where I got pulled aside and was told, "Dude, your team's doing fill in the blank and it has to stop." Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much every four hours, I think he got that lecture from somebody. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of doors being opened down the hallway and heads poking out, asking if we were serious. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. We were not serious. Well, we were serious about having fun, and we yeah. were serious about playing Frisbee. But yeah. I, I think there was a lot of teams that went to Paganello that were just serious about Frisbee and then going to bed early and not necessarily going to the party. But The French teams. You know. <laughs> Their mistake. Well, I mean, like, the Italian team never came to the party, really. Uh, the Brits didn't that often. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. It was, gave us something to tease them about. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no doubt. Woody, man, it was awesome talking to you. Thanks for joining us for the On the Line segment. Um, it was awesome to see you. I wish we could talk for an hour, but we need to wrap. Um, yeah, no problem. I, we got to do it in person sometime without the cameras, maybe. Yeah, it'd be be great to get together sometime and, and hang out. Good to see you, Woody. Get some of those yeah, car Woody. bombs. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Good seeing y'all. You Good too. See you, Sean. See you, Wood. Later, Woody. Throw it up. <laughs> Cross those fingers. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey.